خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا اعزائی المشاہدین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اہلا و سہلا بکم فی برنامج انشطة امیر المؤمنین في الأيام القليلة الماضية ويشرفنا أن نقدم لكم أبرز ما جاء في اللقاءين الافتراضيين لذين عقدهما حضرته وأيده الله تعالى بنصره العزيز مع أبناء الجماعة الإسلامية الأحمدية الأفارقة ونبدأ بيوم السبت حيث التقى حضرته أعضاء الهيئة الإدارية في مجلس خدام الأحمدية في بوركينا فاسو الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم صلاة وسلام على نبينا نبي محمد الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب يوم السبت السادس والعشرين من فبراير شباط المنصرم أتيحت الفرصة لأعضاء الهيئة الإدارية الوطنية لمجلس خدام الأحمدية في بوركينا فاسو للقاء أمير المؤمنين أيضه الله تعالى بنصره العزيز وخلال الاجتماع أتيحت الفرصة لهم جميعا لطلب إرشادات وتوجيهات حضرته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا وزو وعليكم السلام وزور مي اپنے تعارف اردو میں کرواؤں گا اچھا ماشاءاللہ جامعہ انٹرنیشنل سے پڑھا ہوا ہے جی حضور اچھا ماشاءاللہ میرا نام حسن جنگانی ہے اچھا تو آپ مجھے خط لکھتے رہتے ہیں اردو میں ٹائپ کر کے اچھا اچھا میں بوبو جلسو کے مربی سلسلہ ہوں اور مجلس قرم الاحمدیہ میں محتمیم تربیت کے طور پر کام کرتا ہوں اچھا ماشاءاللہ تو تربیت کا پلان کیا ہے کیا تربیت کریں گے نمازوں کی طرح توجہ ہے قرآن پڑھنے کی طرح توجہ ہے دینی علم سیکھنے کی طرح توجہ ہے اخلاق کو بہتر کرنے کی طرح توجہ ہے اور اگر ہے تو کس طرح ہے نمازیں پڑھنے کے بارے میں کیا منصوبہ ہے کتنے فیصد خدام جو ہیں وہ باجماعت نماز پڑھتے ہیں آپ کے ہاں تو ریکسٹیشن کوئی نہیں ہے وہاں نماز باجماعت پڑھنی چاہیے جی حضور ان سارے امور کی لحاظ سے کوشش کرتے ہیں تاکہ بہتر سے بہتر ہو جائے ٹھیک ہے اصل چیز یہ ہے نماز نماز کی طرح توجہ ہونی چاہیے خدام کی نماز پڑھنے کی عادت ہو جائے تو پھر انشاءاللہ تعالی باقی طرح توجہ بھی پیدا ہوتی ہے تو تربیت کریں اور دوسرے قرآن کریم پڑھنے کی طرف توجہ ہونی چاہیے ان کی زیادہ پھر یہ ہے کہ کوئی نہ کوئی تربیت کے لیے نا کوئی حوالہ نکال کے ایک صفحے کا آدھے صفحے کا حوالہ نکال کے حضرت مسیمہ علیہ السلام کا یا کوئی حدیث نکال کے وہ دیا کریں لوگوں کو سرکولیٹ کیا کریں خدام کو تاکہ وہ اس کو پڑھیں اور اپنی اصلاح کریں اور تربیت کریں پھر کوشش کریں کہ سارے خدام جو ہیں وہ خطوہ جمعہ جو آتا ہے امٹی اے پہ ہر دفعہ میرا اس کو ضرور سنا کریں ٹھیک ہے جی جو ہوئی انشاءاللہ تھا My name is Baru Ahmed Rashid. I am Muhtamim Tarbiyat Namuwain. Are you born Ahmadi or you accepted Ahmadi at some time ago? Je ne suis pas Ahmadi de naissance, je fais bayat. He was not born an Ahmadi, he did his bayat. Acha, acha, mashallah. Acha. So for different groups, for different religious backgrounds, uh, they should have different plan and program. So those Muslims who are Muslim, it is quite possible that there are a number of uh, Qudam who join Ahmadiyyat, know the words of prayer, Surah Fatiha, and they can read the Quran then. For them, you have to make a plan that you tell them more about Ahmadiyyat and uh, try to increase their Islamic religious knowledge. And those who come from Christian background, 
they should have a different training program. They should learn the words of Surah Fatiha, the prayers, Salat, tell them how to offer Salat, what is the meaning of the Salat, or why should we offer five daily prayers, and for other groups as well. So different groups should have different plan and program, not the same plan for each and every uh, group. Okay, inshallah. Inshallah. So, uh, those who know Surah Fatiha, they should know the meaning of it. And when they know the meaning of it while praying, they will pray more fervently than before. So, in this way, each and every word we recite in the prayer, you should know the meaning of it. And uh, that will strengthen your faith and firm belief in God, the Almighty. That's all? Yes. Eh? Yes. Sadr Sahib, that's all. Eh? Now, Allah, Hafiz, Allah, Allah keep you safe and let you work hard for the cause of the Jamaat and uh, give you the strength to spread the message of Islam Ahmadiyyat all across the country. <laughs> Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> وفي اليوم التالي أتيحت الفرصة لأعضاء الجمعية الإسلامية الأحمدية لعموم إفريقيا في المملكة المتحدة للقاء حضرة خليفة المسيح الخامس أيده الله تعالى بنصره العزيز افتراضيا وقبل جلسة الأسئلة والأجوبة تم تقديم سلسلة من العروض التقديمية ألي مواندا سايب تلابت مرانا جوزو أوعب بلعبد حضور Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are getting old now. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I was over with your prayers. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Mohande sahab, yes, so you said that it is because of my prayers you are getting old. My prayers, <laughs> no, but my prayers are to keep you young. I love my Not old. Jazakallah. Andur no mohande. Jazakallah. Aji, President Sir Pama, UK. It is an honor and a privilege of inestimable proportions for us to be blessed with an audience with our beloved Huzu at this virtual mulakat. And I take the opportunity on behalf of the entire Palmer family to renew and reaffirm our unwavering love, loyalty, devotion, allegiance and obedience to the sacred institution of Khilafat. بعد ذلك قام أعضاء الجمعية الإسلامية الأحمدية لعموم إفريقيا بإلقاء القصائد بطريقتهم الجميلة والفريدة السلام عليكم سيدنا السلام عليكم سيدنا Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina, Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina, Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Badarka Hazishan, Khairul Anam, Shafi'ul Waramar. Take
ولبقية الاجتماع أتيحت لأعضاء جمعية عموم إفريقيا فرصة الحديث مع أمير المؤمنين أيده الله تعالى بنصره العزيز وطلب توجيهاته بشأن مجموعة من القضايا وكانت البداية مع عضوات لجنة إماء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ما دي أبي لابد حزور وعليكم السلام ما شاء الله In the Holy Quran chapter 64 verse 15 Allah Almighty has stated that, O ye who believe, surely among your wives and your children are some who are your enemies, so beware of them. Could my beloved Huzo please explain why wives and children have been stated here and not husbands? <laughs> so, if we include husband, then you don't have any question. The thing is that Quran here has used the word azwajikum wa aladikum. And azwaj only doesn't mean wives. In my view, azwaj means husband and wife both. If husband is not good, you have to be very much careful and vigilant and beware of their activities if they are doing against. Islam and Amdiyat. So this is my view and it has been translated wives and children. But the Arabic word used is azwaj. That means spouse. Eh? And spouse includes both. So I tried to find out why we have used this. So ultimately I found that Khalifat al was also of this view that azwaj means spouse. And he has translated in his Urdu translation, not wives, but spouse. So your spouses and your children. So if you use this word, spouse, then you don't have any question. Huh? No, it is, it is solved. You see, even sometimes your husbands are also your enemies if they are asking you to act uh, against the teachings of Islam and Amdiyat. So this is why sometimes women have more influence on men and uh, quite a number of times we, we see that men have more influence on their uh, wives. So this is why I think those who were translating it were influenced. During that time, the women were not very much aware of uh, the Islamic teachings. But now you are very well educated. You know the meaning of the Quran. You can read the Holy Quran. You know the tradition of Islam and Amdiyat. You, you have the knowledge. Even sometimes our women are more knowledgeable than men. Then here you can say, beware of your husbands and children. <laughs> right? OK. <laughs> that is enough. My question is, in these unprecedented times where people have lost dear ones, lost or changed jobs, and finances may fluctuate, 
How can one remain resolute in Allah the Almighty? Jazakallah. When you have more work and you are absorbed in your worldly activities and doing your job and busy in your business and other jobs, then normally it is seen that uh, you don't pay full attention to your prayers. So I take it other way around. Whenever a person is in trouble, they try to uh, bow before Allah Ta'ala more than before. So this is the time that uh, you pay full attention towards Allah Ta'ala, observe your prayers on time, and pray to Allah Ta'ala that He removes all these problems and uh, you come out from this difficult time. Right? So, in my view, you should be more resolute than before. When you are having a good job, you are earning money, you are busy with your worldly activities, then normally we see that people forget who Allah is and when to worship. Or we should we worship Allah or not? You don't remember Allah Ta'ala. You see, generally what we experience in this world, that those people who are involved in worldly things, normally they do not pay attention to Allah Ta'ala. This is why atheism is increasing in this Western world. Because uh, they think that what they are doing is because of their abilities, their education, their knowledge, and their better financial positions. So this is what we observe normally, that those who are worldly people do not pray to Allah Ta'ala and try to follow the injunctions and commandments given to us by Allah Ta'ala. Rather, the poor people pay more attention towards Allah. And now, if you think that this is the time when you are in trouble, then you pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala removes all your problems. And then also promise that whenever your conditions come to normal, you will never leave offering for one prayers. So this is the time that you bow before Allah more than before. When you are in trouble, when your child is sick, you pray to Allah Ta'ala. When you yourself are in trouble or sick, then you pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala give you sound health. So this is the time that you pray to Allah Ta'ala instead of saying that uh, how can we pray and observe our duties towards Allah Ta'ala. Right? Yeah, So my question is, once again, the African continent is marred by wars and coup d'etat. What is beloved Huzu's advice to the African leaders regarding this situation. So which part of the world is now free of these things? Not only Africa. <laughs> Everywhere in the world we can see now the situation in Europe is more dangerous than in Africa because this situation can encircle whole of the world. I have been telling all the time that for peace, of the country and the society, you need justice and absolute justice. Until and unless our leadership is honest and do justice to their work, to their people, we cannot uh, maintain peace in the society. And these things will continue. Wherever you see the leadership is good, they are honest with their people. Those countries are flourishing or developing to some extent. But uh, unfortunately, in Africa, in Asia even, there are quite a number of countries. Even in Europe now, we can see the leadership is not honest. So we pray, we ask the leadership to be honest and recognize their creator and believe that all their deeds 
are being seen by Allah Ta'ala and whatever they are doing, they will be answerable for it, if not in this world, in the hereafter, then they will do good. So we have to make them realize that there is one God. And don't think that this is the only world. In the hereafter, you will be answerable for all your deeds. And whatever the responsibility you have been interested, you will be asked for it. And if you are not discharging your duties properly, then Allah Ta'ala will punish you. So this is the only thing which can reform them. That is what I have been telling all the time whenever I get chance to the leaders, that always think that Allah Ta'ala is watching over us. If we realize this fact, then it will be okay. Otherwise, it will continue like this. We can only pray or make the effort to convert whole of the country or the continent into true Islam. As you have listened to in the Talawat recited before you, then you will be one nation, one people, and will be honest with each other and discharge your duties towards each other and discharge your duties towards Allah Ta'ala. Right? This is the only solution. Otherwise, there is no hope of any reformation. <laughs> right? <laughs> My question is, we notice some of the PAMA members don't ascend, attend some of the Jamaat meetings for the reasons that the meetings are, are mostly held in the Urdu language and they don't understand. So what is the point in attending such meetings? You see, then uh, the organizers and the office bearers should be held responsible for it. Why are they conducting their meetings in Urdu? I have asked many a times that 70% uh, of our meetings should be conducted in English so that everyone can understand it. And English speaking people should also be given chance to speak in the meetings, in their speeches, addresses or whatever it is, whether they hold any office or not, doesn't matter. If some people do not understand, then 70% of the meeting should be in English and 30% in Urdu. So this is the responsibility of National Amir Sahib. Nishin Sahib is sitting here and your local Jamaat presidents that they should ask their office bearers that uh, the meeting should be conducted in English so that everyone can benefit from it. So if they are not attending, although they are losing the blessing of at least sitting in an atmosphere where Allah and His uh, Prophet's name is being uh, narrated and uh, the passages of the Prophet Islam's books are being read. But apart from that, this is the fault of our office bearers. At least 70% of the program should be in English. So you can convey my message to your Jamaat president. Right? My question is, according to the promised Messiah, Ali Salaam, jihad of this age is jihad of the pen, since Islam is attacked through the use of pen. If defensive fighting was granted to Muslims in earlier period of Islam, why are Ahmadis not allowed to fight defensively against the persecutions in Pakistan and other countries, since such persecutions are not through the use of pen. You see, the Prophet Islam has said that I have come to this world in this age to establish peace. And I have come on the footsteps of the Messiah of Moses. 
Did Jesus Christ ever fought against his enemies? No. He was persecuted. He was uh, beaten. Even he was put on the cross. Although Allah saved him from there. But he tolerated all these things. So the Prophet Messiah has said that I have come on the footsteps of Jesus Christ. This is why he says now jihad of sword is not permissible. And he quoted the hadith of the Holy Prophet It is in the Bukhari that now jihad is not permissible in, during the time of the Prophet Messiah Our work is to spread the message of uh, true Islam, of love, peace, and harmony. What we are gaining through this message is more than what we can achieve by fighting with each other. What shall we gain by fighting? You see, those Pakistanis who have come to join Ahmadiyyad, they are from among those people. They have the same mentality, same psyche, some of them are from some martial tribes. But despite that, when they accept Ahmadiyyat, they say now the teaching of Islam Ahmadiyyat is that you should show patience and bear all these atrocities being committed against Ahmadis by opponents. So this is why, as Muslim al-Islam has said, since the Holy Prophet also prophesied that during the time of the Prophet Messiah, he will face and his Jamaat will face all the atrocities, but you should tolerate them. So, this is why we are not retaliating, otherwise we can retaliate. But what will happen? We shall shatter the peace of the country, which is already in danger. Once uh, a person said to the third Khalifa that, permit me that we can organize some group and uh, use some petrol bombs and some other bombs and create disturbance in the country. He said that, yes, you can do it. But then Allah Ta'ala will say, okay, now you and your opponents do whatever you like, and I am leaving you. If Allah Ta'ala leaves us, then we don't have any safe place. So it is better to follow the commandment of Allah Ta'ala that during the time of the Prophet Messiah we should spread our message through love, peace, and harmony, and show patience. This is why we do not fight, right? <laughs> okay. My question is, I know I love beloved Huzur very much. However, I notice when it comes to playing sports and watching football <laughs> matches, for instance, I feel the passion I have for that seems stronger than watching Huzur on MTE. So my question is, how can I develop such passion and desire for beloved Huzur? which will supersede my sports and, in fact, everything I do, so that I wish to watch Huzur on MTA and listen to you always. You see, it is a tradition, and the Prophet Islam also has said that we should love each other for the sake of Allah. Allah Ta'ala says that if two believers love each other for the sake of me, eh, to please me, then I will love them and I will uh, shower my blessings on them abundantly. So, if you think that you love the Khalifa of the time because of the love of Allah Ta'ala, then all other loves should go on the side. And only one thing 
should be in your forefront and that is love of Allah Ta'ala. And for the love of Allah Ta'ala, you love your Khalifa and you love each other. Right? And Khalifa loves because of the sake of Allah Ta'ala, the members of the Amji community. So if this is in your mind, then your love of football and other games will not take over your love to the Khilafat and um, Allah. You see, once uh, son of Ali, the fourth Khalifa of the Holy Prophet وسلم, asked him that, uh, do you love me? The father said, yes, I love you. And then the son said, do you love Allah Ta'ala? Hazrat Ali said, yes, I love Allah Ta'ala. So then the son asked, then how can two loves be in one heart? You love me and you love Allah Ta'ala. And Hazrat Ali replied that when the time of love of Allah comes, then only one love, and that is Allah. So if there is time for prayer, and at the same time you are watching a football match on the television, which you love very much, then you put off the television and then pray first properly, not quickly, very fervently, right? Very fervently. And then after that, if you have time, then you can watch the match again. The same thing, if the Khalifa of the time is addressing and giving a speech live, addressing you directly, then you listen to him first and you can see the recording of the match later on. You have to see your preference order. Which love you prefer more? Your religion, your attachment to Khilafat, your love to Allah Ta'ala, or your love to your f football match or the team you like more. Huh? So you'll have to decide yourself. How can I ask you to love Khalifa more? You will have to decide yourself. I know you are, <laughs> you have a pious nature, right? Okay. Yes. Acha, now, Sadr Sahib, Pama, now yes, you have already taken two, three minutes extra, okay. huh? and time yes, is sir. over. And uh, I know there are some more questions, yes. but uh, next time, we shall see it next time. Inshallah, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Also, one of your uh, Pama member is uh, also sitting with me here. So, you have a participation, your presence in this room as well. MashaAllah. Acha? Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Thanks, Assalamu alaikum. ونختتم نسرتنا بملخص لخطبة الجمعة الماضية التي ألقاها مولانا أمير المؤمنين أيده الله تعالى بنصره العزيز وفي ختام الخطبة طلب أمير المؤمنين نصره الله من الأحمديين مواصلة الدعاء للظروف التي يمر بها العالم وقال إن هناك تهديدات باستخدام السلاح النووي فعلينا الإكثار من الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والاستغفار والدعاء أن يهب لقادة العالم الحكمة وفي القيام بعد الركوع يجب أن ندعو ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار بهذا وصلنا إلى ختام نشرتنا ولمزيد من المعلومات والأخبار يرجى متابعتنا على العناوين الظاهرة أسفل الشاشة دمتم في رعاية الله وأمنه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته خليفة همارا ودل هي همارا آقا همارا